Adenosine is a naturally occurring compound that may be used to treat cardiac arrhythmias. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover the important facts about adenosine so you'll be ready come test day. We're in a movie theater on Halloween night for a scary movie marathon. The big screen is currently playing trailers for the movies that will be shown later tonight. That's why a dino scene is playing on the big screen, since dinosaurs are pretty scary, right? By the way, the phrase a dino scene should serve as your memory anchor to adenosine, since a dino scene sounds like adenosine, right? Now that we're anchored to this scene, let's move on to learn the clinical uses of adenosine. To keep things organized, we've clustered these symbols in the foreground on the left. This is a control booth for the theater's AV team. One of the monitors is broken and is filled with static, so they called in an electrician to fix it. The unusual patterns of this static remind me of arrhythmias, since arrhythmias are characterized by unusual patterns on a cardiac rhythm strip. The arrhythmia-like static is our recurring symbol for cardiac arrhythmias, a group of medical conditions in which the heart beats with an irregular rhythm. So, fixing the arrhythmia-like static should remind you that adenosine treats arrhythmias. In other words, adenosine is an antiarrhythmic. Adenosine is commonly used to treat a certain type of arrhythmia, which we'll cover in our next symbol. The electrician came dressed for Halloween and is wearing an old Soviet tee. However, this booth is hot and sweaty due to all the electronics inside, so he took off his Soviet tee and put it on top of the monitor. By the way, the Soviet tee should remind you of SVT, since Soviet T contains the letters SVT, right? SVT technically stands for supraventricular tachycardia. Supra means above, ventricular refers to the ventricles, and tachycardia describes a fast heart rate. Putting this together, supraventricular tachycardia refers to any unusually fast heart rhythm that originates above the ventricles. Next, take a look at how the Soviet T is draped over the monitor with arrhythmia-like static. This should remind you that SVT is a type of arrhythmia. So the electrician fixing the static with the Soviet T represents how adenosine treats SVT. Adenosine works to treat SVT by briefly slowing down the heart's electrical signals, allowing the heart to reset and return to a normal rhythm. This is a good segue into the mechanisms behind how adenosine works. To keep things organized, we've clustered these symbols on the right side of the scene. This is one of those movie theaters where you can order food to be delivered to your seat while watching the movie. Towards the back of the theater, we can see the area where workers prepare the food. One of the guests has ordered a banana ice cream sundae, so this worker is dumping out a bowl of bananas onto a counter to peel them for serving. By the way, bananas are a recurring symbol for potassium, since bananas have a lot of potassium, right? So dumping bananas out of this bowl should remind you of how adenosine causes cells of the heart to dump potassium out. Put another way, adenosine increases potassium efflux. This increase in potassium efflux is the first part of the mechanism that adenosine uses to slow electrical signals in the heart. The next key ingredient in a banana sundae is ice cream, which is kept in this freezer. This freezer keeps things extra cold, as evidenced by that hyperpolarized logo. The hyperpolarized logo should help you remember how adenosine causes hyperpolarization of the cell. Hyperpolarization describes when the electrical charge of a cell becomes more negative than usual. Adenosine does this through the potassium efflux we just covered. These potassium ions usually carry a positive charge, so when they leave the cell, they cause the inside of the cell to become more negative compared to the outside. If we take a look at the ice cream dispenser the worker just took out of the freezer, you'll see that this isn't just any ice cream. It's actually the world-famous calcium ice cream. Calcium ice cream is our recurring symbol for calcium, since calcium sounds like calcium. And dairy products contain lots of calcium, right? This machine is dispensing a stream of ice cream going into the bowl below. The stream of ice cream entering the bowl represents the movement of calcium into the cell, which is also known as the inward calcium current. However, in this theater's recipe, the bananas are supposed to go into the bowl first before the ice cream. That's why the worker is blocking the ice cream from entering the bowl with his hand. This symbolizes how adenosine blocks the inward calcium current. While the exact mechanism behind this is unclear, adenosine directly inhibits calcium channels, which blocks the inward flow of calcium ions into the cells of the heart. This causes changes in the electrical conduction of the heart, which we'll cover next. Back inside the control booth, we can see a heart-shaped soundboard for the audio video, or AV team, with wires connecting the top and bottom halves of the board. Someone's left a post-it note for the AV team on the wires here. You might even call it an AV note. The AV note is our recurring symbol for the AV node, also known as the atrioventricular node. 
Just like the conducting wires connect the top and the bottom of the soundboard, the AV node acts as a bridge to conduct electrical impulses from the atria above to the ventricles below. Let's review this diagram of the heart, with the left and right atria above and the left and right ventricles below. Electrical conduction begins in the SA node and travels through the atria to reach the AV node. The AV node then conducts these impulses down through the His Purkinje system into the ventricles below. This pattern of electrical activation allows for contractions to move from the atria to the ventricles in a normal heartbeat. Returning to the AV soundboard, a slow snail has found its way onto this connecting wire and is slowly working its way down. This slow snail on the conducting wire at the AV node should help you remember how adenosine slows conduction at the AV node. If it helps, we've also drawn the slime of the snail damaging the wire as an additional way to show how conduction at the AV node is slowed. Let's return to our graphic of the heart and zoom into a cell of the AV node and review its action potential graph. On the y-axis, we show the membrane voltage, and on the x-axis, we show time. Normally, the voltage slowly climbs to reach a threshold voltage, known as the action potential, or AP threshold. After reaching this threshold, the voltage quickly climbs as the cell activates, before falling back down to reset for the next activation. While this is a bit of a simplification, you can think of the upward climb in voltage as being mainly caused by calcium current into the cell, while the downward falls in voltage are mainly dependent on potassium efflux out of the cell. As the AV node cycles through these stages, each spike corresponds to an electrical impulse that is conducted through the AV node from the atria above into the ventricles below. Now let's discuss what happens when we administer adenosine. Earlier, we covered how adenosine blocks calcium currents into the cell, which slows the climb in voltage at the beginning of each action potential. We also discussed how adenosine increases potassium efflux, which causes a deeper and steeper fall in voltage at the end of each action potential. This leads to hyperpolarization, in which the membrane voltage falls to a more negative amount than normal. As the AV node cycles, all of these factors work in tandem to slow down the conduction of electrical impulses at the AV node. For example, the AV node was normally able to activate three times in this period, but has slowed down to only two times after giving adenosine. Now let's go back to our diagram of the heart and cover why adenosine treats SVT. Technically, SVT is a broad term consisting of many different arrhythmias, but for teaching purposes, we'll focus on the most common type of SVT called AV nodal reentry tachycardia. In this type of SVT, an abnormal looping circuit which involves the AV node is formed, bypassing the normal pacemaking function of the SA node. Every time the AV node activates, it conducts an impulse to cause the ventricles to contract. This said, the loop is highly dependent on timing. You see, right after activating, the AV node enters a cooldown period where it needs to reset before it can activate again. In this type of SVT, the AV node resets just as the electrical impulses loops around and re-enters the node, causing the AV node to fire again and continue the loop. This happens over and over again very quickly, which causes the heart to beat too quickly. When adenosine slows conduction in the AV node, it can lengthen the cooldown to break the timing of the loop. This can allow the normal pacemakers to take over and restore the heart to a normal rhythm. Since the broken monitor from earlier cannot be used while it's being fixed by the electrician, the AV team set up a laptop to control the video feed going to the main screen. On the laptop screen, we can see a countdown timer. As it turns out, the dino scene is actually a movie trailer that only lasts 15 seconds. This 15 second countdown timer symbolizes how adenosine is very short acting, with a duration of action lasting less than 15 seconds. This duration is very short because adenosine is rapidly broken down by the body. That said, this short duration of action can provide a brief but effective interruption of abnormal heart rhythms, allowing the heart's electrical system to reset and ideally return to a normal rhythm. Now let's look at the control booth employee, who came to work dressed up as Theodore Roosevelt for Halloween. As the name tag on his costume suggests, let's just call him Theodore's nickname, Theo. Since Theo has to work late into the night at the movie theater, he was filling up his coffee to stay awake through his shift. By the way, Theophilin should help you remember Theophilin, since Theophilin sounds a lot like Theophilin, right? Theophilin is a medication used to treat respiratory conditions like asthma. Unfortunately, Theo accidentally spilled his coffee all over the laptop controlling the big screen. You can see that the laptop is smoking and is about to break. You could even say that the actions of Theophilin are damaging the dino scene. This should help you remember how the actions of adenosine are decreased or blunted by theophylline. 
You see, theophylin works by blocking the action of adenosine in the body. Therefore, in patients taking theophylline, the effects of giving adenosine may be lessened or entirely absent. Providers should confirm the patient is not taking theophylline before deciding to administer adenosine. Next, let's focus on the coffee that Theo was filling his cup with. This coffee should also remind you of caffeine, since coffee contains caffeine, right? You could also say that the coffee is damaging the dinocene, which symbolizes how the actions of adenosine can be blunted by caffeine as well. Similar to theophylline, caffeine also blocks the actions of adenosine. This may be problematic when treating a patient with SVT who recently consumed coffee, since the actions of adenosine may be less effective. Therefore, asking about caffeine consumption is an important consideration when deciding whether to administer adenosine. Let's close out by learning about the side effects patients may experience after adenosine is administered. To make things easier to remember, we've clustered these symbols in the background by the theater seats. In the front row of the theater, we can see a moviegoer who was really scared by all the Halloween movie trailers. She has been feeling a sense of impending doom while imagining something terrible about to happen. This represents how adenosine can cause a sense of impending doom as a side effect. This describes a brief period of extreme anxiety and fear due to an intense feeling that something life-threatening or tragic is about to occur. This is thought to be caused by the sudden slowing of the heart, which tells your brain to activate the body's fight-or-flight response. Telling patients about this side effect before giving adenosine can lessen the psychological impact. The moviegoer got so scared by the trailers that she developed an episode of sudden chest pain. The chest pain should help you remember that adenosine may cause chest pain as a side effect. The chest pain is quite uncommon and usually goes away after 15 seconds when the drug is effectively cleared from the bloodstream. Due to the moviegoer experiencing chest pain, a paramedic was called in. This paramedic took out a first aid kit to collect vitals like blood pressure. However, instead of focusing on his job, he was distracted by the trailers on the screen. When the dino scene appeared, the paramedic got so scared that he grabbed onto one of the Halloween decorations in the aisle of the theater. If we look closely, we'll notice that he's actually squeezing the branches of an inflatable tree. The branches of this tree resemble the shape of the bronchi and bronchioles in the lungs. What's more, these branches are inflatable, which is similar to how the airways of the lungs are filled with air, right? Therefore, the squeezing of these inflatable branches should help you remember how adenosine can cause constriction of the bronchi and bronchioles, which is also known as bronchoconstriction. This usually presents as sudden shortness of breath and may exacerbate symptoms of COPD or asthma. While this side effect usually also goes away after 15 seconds or so, providers should use caution and be prepared to treat bronchoconstriction, especially in patients with underlying respiratory conditions. When the paramedic jumped in fear, he dropped a pair of scissors on the blood pressure cuff, causing it to deflate. This deflating blood pressure cuff symbolizes how adenosine can lower blood pressure to cause the side effect of hypotension. This matters because a significant drop in blood pressure can lead to dizziness, fainting, or compromised blood flow to vital organs. The blood pressure and vitals of patients should be closely monitored during adenosine administration. After realizing his mistake, this paramedic is now blushing with embarrassment. This blushing should help you remember how adenosine can cause flushing as a side effect. Adenosine dilates blood vessels near the skin, leading to warmth and redness, which may be accompanied by a tingling sensation. This flushing is usually harmless and disappears with the rest of adenosine's effects shortly after administration. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. Adenosine is an antiarrhythmic drug that is commonly used to treat SVT. It works by increasing potassium efflux out of cells, causing hyperpolarization and blocking calcium current into the cell. This causes slowed conduction at the AV node. Adenosine is very short acting with a duration of action lasting 15 seconds or less. Notably, the actions of adenosine can be blunted by theophylline or caffeine. Side effects of adenosine include a sense of impending doom, chest pain, bronchospasm, hypotension, and flushing. And now we're actually done with adenosine. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.